Good morning, Good morning everybody. everybody. What's, What's going, going on? on? This, this is, is the Investing, investing Bros. Bro. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, Tim, 30-year fixed mortgage rate has gone down oh. uh, to a whopping 6.77%. Still not time to buy a home yet. It's moving the right way. Uh, we did get PPI month over month came in. Uh, was expected to be down a uh, one-tenth of a percent on the consensus and the forecast. Actually came in down three-tenths of a percent. So PPI is coming down. The core PPI... Uh, came in as expected on consensus, uh, beating the forecast a little bit higher there, uh, coming in the same neutral as what it was previously. Big ones today, guys, Fed rate decisions. Right now, we're sitting at 5.25, the consensus and the forecast, as you can see right here, uh, 5.25, 2.54%. We came down two tenths of a percent off of yesterday's yeah. information. So, uh, Again, not uh, not the same methodology as what the federal government uses. Federal government says we're at four. This is the old methodology that the federal government used to use before they manipulated numbers. Interesting to see. Let's take a look here. Go, gotta love the liquidations, man. Someone made money. Remember, every time there's a liquidation, someone made money. Liquidations, $10 million on Bitcoin, $7 million of that on longs. So everyone's still pushing longs. That's why I look at this, but just so you guys know, as a trader, I want to know who's getting hurt the most because if I keep seeing these longs get liquidated and shorts lessening, then it means that we're probably about to get that flip. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Liquidations on Ethereum, only sitting at 6.8 million. And total liquidations in the past 24 hours, uh, we're going to be looking right here, $39 million in liquidations. Biggest one again, Binance. That's really not that much. O only it's not. 30, yeah, it's, 39 million is not a lot. Definitely slowing down, starting to uh, even mm -hmm. out here. Um, so it's, it's yeah. good when we see that. It means that things are, people are waiting and watching. So, and sometimes patience is the key to a good trade. You know what? I got to start with the man himself, Piper. Piper, have you smashed the like button yet? Uh, let me get to that, Tim. Uh... I thought you'd forgotten again. <laughs> All right. CME Futures Tool at this point is predicting 95.3% chance that we will be pausing. Now, there's been a lot of chaos when it comes to the predictions after this. I know briefly yesterday, there actually was a very small percentage of people predicting that we might have a rate cut. Well, that's over. Now we got 4.7 predicting that we could raise another 25. Not going to happen, guys. This is about a sure deal. We're going to pause here in the month of June, but July is... Is still leaning towards a rate hike. I know there was a moment yesterday, brief moment, where they were predicting a pause in July as well. That's over. We're back to predicting a rate hike in the month of July. Then we get to September and we get another pause. Then we get to November, another pause. And then here's where it is. Earlier, I, I checked this earlier. There actually was some, it was like very close, but there was a lot of people predicting that we would go ahead and end the year at that 525 to 550, which is 25 points higher than we currently are. But now we're sitting here right now predicting we will finish where we currently are after a rate hike in July. So a lot can still change here. But while they do look to be pausing here today for this month, July, I could bring us back into another rate hike. Move on here. Bitcoin fear and greed index sitting at 46 here, ticking down into fear. I guess yesterday we were in fear down at 45. The, the day before we were up in the 50s. So nothing necessarily crazy. It's still hovering right around neutral territory. Wanted to give that update. First of all, shout out to Chart Prime. Thank you so much for being a partner of the channel. You guys are going to see us using these indicators a whole heck of a lot. If you guys want to support the channel and have an amazing tool for your trading skills, Chart Prime is the answer. Check out the links down below. So I got a lot of lines going on here. A lot of lines of support and resistance. Let's keep an eye on this one right here. What color should I turn this this morning? Let's go purple. Purple for royalty. And that way it gets some uh, some different colors on here. And this yellow line here. If we were to go back, this purple line has been in place since back here in May on the 28th. Back and then support levels, even though we didn't touch it right there, we got some more support coming in over here on June. So you guys can see very clearly there is a little bit of a symmetrical triangle kind of going on here. And what's crazy is this one we're kind of coming in sideways to then set this symmetrical triangle pattern. So that just adds even more chaos. I mean, already with these patterns, you're looking at percentages and possibilities of do they break to the upside or do they break to the downside? We're not necessarily 100% certain, but especially when you see price action come inside sideways into it.
that's when you're like, all right, it's literally anybody's guess which way Bitcoin should be going. Now, I will use my technical analysis to kind of give opinions as to why I think it's more to the upside than necessarily to the downside. First of all, this 25.2, once again, guys, I'm going to talk about this a lot. 25.2 is very 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 strong support guys it's going to take a whole lot of momentum from the bears to break through it you guys can also see there's other support levels that we've talked about before this green line right here falling has been used as resistance support resistance and has now been turned back into support here the other day now of course we still have that purple line of resistance right there we got to break through however i still see a lot of things happening down there that are supportive rsi is kind of hovering right at the 50 line so again this is more stuff here on the four hour chart kind of saying we're we're really not bullish nor bearish there we go we actually rejected off of a bearish wave of it technically it's still sitting above us but watch for a potential breakthrough what are we seeing out in the daily chart and on the hourly chart as well maybe give us a little bit more of a call right there oh there we go sitting on the middle we're sitting right on top of our daily dynamic reactor but look on the daily chart this is what you love to see on the chart prime oscillators here a couple of days ago got that green triangle with the bullish divergence got a little bit of a bullish flash but then we kind of came back down but we just got a peak seeker are peak seekers perfect no not necessarily but they are big when you combine that with the fact that our daily rsi is hovering right at the 30 these are both signs of bullish movement it should look like bullish movement is coming in what are we seeing here are we hovering we are still below the value area low and the point of control another kind of point in the direction of saying hey guys it would make a lot of sense especially with the fact that coming into this day this fomc day the last couple of weeks a lot of people believed that we were going to get another rate hike and now it's all but certain we're going to have a pause a lot of this is coming kind of coming into cons uh, uh, confluence here that bitcoin should have a little bit of a pump here cardano of course, you guys know we had a massive fall the other day on Cardano. It's kind of hovering right now. It hasn't decided really what it wants to do, but we told you guys the other day how massive when you see that spike in volume like that and you see these flashes we have on the oscillators, how great of a bottom that is. Now we're sitting back up above the zero line, above the 50 line of the RSI. Is it above? It's a little bit below, actually. But we're seeing potentially, is, is Cardano sitting in a space ready to make a move further to the upside? I don't see it dropping below. That, that amount of volume right there, at worst, a double bottom. Maybe we retouch. This wick comes down to about 21 cents, 21.8 cents. At worst, a retouch. But with that amount of volume sitting there, I think that Cardano has found its bottom here as well. The dollar collapse is imminent. Dixie is starting to fall once again. Is it still well above where it bottomed out earlier this year? Yes, it is. But look as it begins to fall. Now, we do have a little peak seeker coming in here on this four-hour chart. Let's go look at the daily, though, and see what it is saying. We're starting to approach down towards lower levels. I think we have further to drop down towards this 0.5 level at about 102 and 18 cents, give or take. Don't be surprised just because we're moving to the downside. Nor normal downward movements, normal bearish trends, and that's what it is, have bounces. So just because we see a dollar bounce and start to move to the upside, that doesn't mean the dollar is reliving. That just means uh, you're coming back up for breath pretty much. As long as we're not setting new highs and we keep setting these lower lows and lower highs, this is a bearish trend for the Dixie that I'm watching to see. Do we finally make a break down here? We finally break below this $100 level and start to make our way towards this golden pocket we've been talking about literally since back here in January of this year. So months now, this golden pocket area of 98 cents. And then maybe, maybe, maybe we see a little bit of a, a sideways movement on the dollar as we have that everything's all right rally that comes in later this year right before the stock market really has its doomsday. Keep your eyes on that right now. But as we're seeing it at the moment, the Dixie is falling once again. Just wanted to bring to your guys' attention, Bitcoin exchange supply hits a three-year low. This article from you today, it kind of breaks down the concept of really saying the reason why this low is happening is because of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which is known as FUD, about these exchanges, especially with the new lawsuits coming to Binance and Coinbase. Here's what people do need to know, though. When supply is low, that's still a good sign that people are holding their Bitcoin. If there's not Bitcoin on an exchange that can easily be moving and being sold, that means they're just holding it, which is a good sign. That marks bottoms. Now, of course, this is probably being sparked by outside forces, not necessarily just price action, but it is still a bullish sign that Bitcoin exchanges are 
their supply is this low, it keeps the price from being able to tank too quickly. Another reason adding on with the charts, why I still believe 25.2 is a very strong level of support. The SEC finally answers Coinbase. Of course. Wow. They literally did the least they could have possibly do. The SEC's lengthy response reveals a continued reluctance to clarify its stance on cryptocurrency regulation or commit to any definitive timeline for rulemaking, despite the court's explicit orders. The SEC refutes Coinbase's demand for immediate action, labeling it as an extraordinary request. The commission argues that due to the vast scope of Coinbase rulemaking petition, which was filed just months ago and supplemented more recently, it has not yet determined an appropriate course of action. This, according to the SEC, is an entirely reasonable stance considering the circumstances. So pretty much the SEC deems and rules that they're delaying is reasonable. This is where we get really meat of this article here. In somewhat an unexpected development, the SEC has given an estimated timeline for further action. The Council for the Commission states that they anticipate being able to make a recommendation regarding Coinbase's rulemaking petition within the next 120 days. Coinbase <laughs> is pretty much saying, you have not told us anything. You, you, you've accused us of breaking laws that you won't even tell us what's happening. And they laid out this huge case as to why they think everything's okay. The SEC comes back and says, oh, oh no, uh, you, you have so much paperwork here. It's going to take us a really long time. Um, come back in 120 days and we'll have an answer for you. Why do you think the SEC is delaying? Why do you think they're doing this? Uh, to Coinbase, Let, let's let's kind of sit here and speculate here for a little bit. I would have to say if the if the reason that they're doing that is probably because they don't know what they don't like the results that are going to be coming out, and that those results can be used against them with the other cases that they have going. So they're going to try to get as much done before the damning information comes out of that lawsuit. Absolutely, there's a lot going on here, and I'm gonna go further with it. They don't have answers. We're gonna talk about this more here in a second during another judge ruling in the Binance.us case. But ultimately, the SEC has no answers. They are delaying. What for, we might ask? What I'm for, not Tim? Gonna be surprised. I'm not going to be surprised, guys. This 120 days, I'm not saying that one will be fully developed and ready to go. But watch within the next 120 days, which is going to put us into October. Watch more news about CBDCs to come out. I guarantee you this is continuation of the SEC's delaying as they're preparing for CBDCs to be able to come out. U.S. judge rebuffs SEC request for Binance.us asset freeze for now. The federal judge overseeing the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission case against Binance and Binance.us declined to order a temporary restraining order freezing the U.S. trading platform's assets. That's a good sign. Love seeing that. If the two sides can agree on limits, Judge Amy Berman Jackson of the D.C. District Court said, there's absolutely no need for a restraining order. In the meantime, the judge ordered Binance.us to provide a list of its business expenses to the court and ordered the parties to continue negotiating. A status update is due by the close of business on Thursday. At times, the judge seemed frustrated by the responses she was hearing when asking whether any Binance.user customer funds had actually left the U.S. After multiple SEC attorneys said that they were mainly concerned concerned about the fact that Binance's global platform controlled enough private key shards to move funds. She shows, I want to know if it's happening or not. She said, it's stunning that I've asked each of you this. Wow, judge, you're now feeling the pain that all the rest of us are feeling. Anytime you ask a question to someone that works at the SEC, you get the roundabout. You get nothing direct whatsoever. And I'm glad to see a United States judge getting pissed off and saying, just freaking answer my questions. You're not even telling me. You're so worried about all this stuff happening and what Binance.us could do, but are they even doing it? Like, is there even a reason why this case is in my courtroom right now? Securities versus commodities. Judge Jackson also dove into the foundational question at the heart of the suit. What makes a crypto asset a security? And is it a commodity if it isn't a security? What is it a crypto asset or crypto asset security? This is their answer. We've provided several examples of crypto if we believe were securities in the broader complaint, but we also reserve the right to access the rest of the tokens on the exchange later. Matthew, that wasn't the question. The question is, what is a crypto asset versus what is a crypto asset security? By telling us you've selected certain ones, that doesn't tell us what one actually is. We keep moving on. The judge asked the SEC and later Binance whether the other cryptocurrencies were commodities. So this is what she asked. The ones you're not calling securities, what are they? She asked, diving into the heart of the issue that vexed the crypto industry for years. She later asked Matthew Martins, the attorney for rep representing Binance at US, if BNB is a commodity since the company had argued it was a security. And Matthew Martin said, it is a crypto asset. I love this judge. What is that? No one wants to tell me. I feel you. I feel you, Judge. No one wants to tell anyone. Nobody knows what an actual security when it comes to crypto is. This could be the biggest headline and story that we see for a long time to come. Treasury Secretary says to expect a slow decline 
in U.S. dollar as reserve currency. Speaking today, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that there should be an expectation of a slow decline in the U.S. dollar as reserve currency. Moreover, the statement arrives amidst international de-dollarization efforts employed by a host of countries, including the BRICS economic bloc. Yellen had previously stated her expectation that the U.S. dollar would remain unchallenged as the global reserve currency. However, it appears as though recent developments have shifted her stance on the matter. Speaking of Reuters, Yellen maintained her confidence in the U.S. dollar, specifically the confidence that it will remain the global reserve currency despite the de-dollarization action that had been taken by countries like China and Russia. Subsequently, she acknowledged attempts by these nations to create an international trade alternative, but described them as difficult to conceive. Uh, guys, we're going to see a slow decline in the U.S. dollar as reserve currency. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. Great job. Now, if you want more content like this, whether it be TA on Bitcoin and Ethereum or altcoins, or you just want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest news in crypto, then stay tuned and tune in to our 9 a.m. live show every single weekday morning. It's 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And when you tune in live, use the keyword grip strength in the chat and you'll get a special shout out from anyone who's paying attention to the chat. Love to see you there.